Right, so Dungeon Encounters is the latest role-playing game by Square Enix, right? This game is super addictive, and, uh, right, I just kind of want to do a sh video about, like, I guess, kind of, like, you know, what it is, and kind of, like, some beginner tips, because they're really, because this game's so new, there really isn't any guides or any information for new players, or kind of, like, what this game really is, and by gosh, this game is... Like I said, probably one of the best uh, role-playing games Square Enix has actually put out in a few years. Like, this is a good game. It might, the graphically, it might not be the most impressed, but mechanically, this game is really addictive, really fun. Right, and this is a game that uh, was directed by uh, Hiroyuki Ito. I already said he's the one who is famous for his work on the Final Fantasy series. Uh, famously, he directed Final Fantasy IX and Final Fantasy XII, but he also is the one who created the active time battle system that was used in Final Fantasy IV through IX and Chrono Trigger, and it's also used here in this game, Dungeon Encounters. Right, Dungeon Encounters is kind of this old-school kind of role-playing game, yet with Final Fantasy mechanics. One person described it as... Uh, like uh wizardry and final fantasy if they had a baby and i mean that might be a good description right so you uh, when you start the game you actually don't get a whole lot of story you get pretty much just two paragraphs that pretty much just tell you that you're in a quiet peaceful village and one day this otherworldly labyrinth popped up and uh now you have to go explore it and uh go um uh, defeat all the fiends and demons and whatnot so after that you get a chance you go to uh, to his town screen where you get to assemble an expedition party. There's a little mini tutorial that tells you about the characters and pretty much, right, there is a bunch of characters. There's like seven that you can choose now and then you see a bunch of characters that are in gray, right? There's actually 24 characters in total that are recruitable, right? But the ones that right here, you notice how they are all, uh, the location right here says 0, 50, 50. That is, corresponds to, to, um, the floor and the uh, y-axis, the floor is zero. So Z is for the floor. Uh, y is the vertical axis. X is the horizontal axis. And then you have all these other guys who are what this is wandering where you don't know a location for yet. Later in the game, you'll get an ability called wandering tracking that'll let you find them. But in the meantime, uh, you can't find them. But uh, there are a couple on this floor, uh, Sespari and Shunga, who you can get now. Uh, right, like I said, you notice that they're both on floor zero. And there's also one other guy on floor two, right? So we are going to uh, just pick. So just right now, just pick one character rather than forming a whole team. You just want to pick one character uh, so you can go find us, Aspari and Shunga, right? And because they're on this floor and they'll just recruit them before we actually uh, build the whole party. There's actually another, there's more guides and mini tutorials you can access, but Shunga is actually just right here right here at 4655 so you just go composition when you're on this tile then go put uh, pull in shunga right and now shunga's in your party and then you can do the same thing uh, with saspari right who is over on this other side of the map right um you notice how there's a tile that's isolated there right so this game has a lot of uh hidden pathways and rooms Right, like I said, so you walk on that, you see how there's a small tile that is a hidden pathway, and this tile right here is actually where Saspari is. So, again, we have composition, add her to the team, and now she's in our team. All right, so now that we have three characters, we could go back and just change our composition and add a fourth character right now if we want to. Right, you could just fill out your party now, but there's actually a couple of things we want to do. Uh, first, right, so you notice there's these town, these these shops right here, right? You could purchase stuff, except we don't have any money. So to get money, what we're going to do is actually take off equipment. And of course, point pop equipment the first time. There's this mini tutorial that explains how to equip characters, etc. But uh, so we want to strip equipment off of everybody, right? There's nine characters total. All of them have equipment. So we're going to take care the equipment off of all nine characters, right? Right, so, and then you have to use, took it off those three characters. You just want to change, go to composition on the academy square, which again is 50 50, um, and just switch them out for the uh, four more characters. Right, and then you're going to do the same thing go back to equipment and strip all of their equipment. Right, like I said, pretty simple. Right, and then you'll do it for like the last uh, two characters to go back to composition take everybody out and then put in the last two characters, which we haven't taken equipment off yet. Right. Um, and then again, take their equipment off. And, uh, you know, now that everybody has all their equipment off, what you want to do now 
is uh, go to composition and you want to choose uh, three characters uh, to add your team. I do recommend Renzo because there is an accessory we stripped off him that only he can use. So he's a good one. And then so once you pick three characters, um, we want to go to the shop here. Right, like I said, super important. Make sure everybody has a uh, recruits crap and a recruits clothing equipped. Right, you don't want to sell stuff until you have the, their armors equipped. Right, so now everyone has the basic armor and hat equipped. Right, we are going to go to Chimera's Arms and actually sell all this extra stuff. We want to sell both hatchets, the other six recruits caps, the other six recruits clothing, the seven broadswords. The four Malio spells, right? And this will leave us with just a short bow, two Maloflex spells, and a ROM accessory, um, which again can only be used by Renzo. Notice how he's highlighted, everyone else is grayed out, right? Like I said, that's an artifact that only, like I said, there's only three characters in the entire game who can use it. Um, so yeah, um, and two of them are much, much later characters. So this is pretty much he's the only one who can use it, which is why I recommend taking him now. Right, so these items we don't sell, but now we have 484 gold, and this is enough to buy a couple of more uh, powerful weapons, which will actually uh, help in the early game. So what we want to go do now is uh, go to purchase. Right, and I recommend buying the javelin because this is an AE physical damage, 60 all. Like, so it's twice powerful as that broadsword, and it hits everybody, and then also buy a crossbow which is a really powerful single target weapon uh, that does physical range damage. And then you go to the wizard shop and then we want to just buy the Maliari, which is range, which is magic AE damage. It does 55 damage to all enemies. That's magic damage, right? So pretty good. And then since we have 64 gold left, we'll go over here to this uh, shield shop and actually just buy these two Etruscans here, right? Like I said, these are an accessory slot. You won't have the PP to equip these yet, but now you have an accessory for all three characters, right? So like I said, Elva, Cespari, and Renzo in this team will now have an accessory that they can equip. Um, like then, and equip weapons on each of them. So you bought three weapons. Make sure each of them have one of them. Um, like I said, or who you put on doesn't matter. I would recommend putting um. One of the AE weapons on uh, Renzo, just because he'll be able to use that ROM. Probably by he might need a level or two to use it, but uh, once he has that ROM equipped, right, he'll, he'll do 20 more damage. So that Maliari spell, right, instead of doing 55, it'll do 75 to all enemies. Like I said, this is pretty good. Like this is kind of why I recommend him at this point in the game, right? Like I said, if you have a character at least 15 AP, like I said, you can actually equip uh, like one of the weapons plus like like a second or like I said on Spari we equipped the crossbow and then we equipped the one of the Maliari spells that way she has a single target physical attack and then a the weaker single target magic attack like so she can kind of clean up enemies after the after the other two characters have kind of um ripped ripped off the defenses right so now that you got uh three characters that are equipped you just want to finish filling out uh the map here Right, filling out the maps kind of is super important because this is how you earn AP in the game, right? Like every so many tiles, you will earn one ability point, right? Like I said, an AP, it lets you equip uh, skills, like I said, and you can actually earn a lot more AP if you completely complete a map on a level. That'll actually award three AP. Uh, but there's all kinds of skills you can equip. Like some of them are useful, like field abilities, uh, such as... Uh, Fiend Scouting or Eagle Eye or combat abilities like uh, Restoration and uh, like Healing and Resurrection spells, right? Those are super important. But uh, anyway, once you go to uh, down the stairs, which is marked with a one, remember ascending stairs, mark, uh, descending stairs marked with a one, descend, ascending stairs marked two, right? You can go to the first floor of the dungeon where you can actually fight battles, Right, and then you do get a mini tutorial that explains ATB gauge and some other uh, basics of combat. Um, but yeah, notice like, you know, if you don't have this fiend, so one of the things, first things you'll get down here is the fiend scouting ability, which will let you see the monster, the fiends before you touch them, right? Like I said, this is a super important ability because without this ability, you actually can't see where the monster fights are. The monst monster fights are not random. They are set on the map. Well, they're randomly placed, but you can see them ahead of time if you have the Fiend Scouting ability equipped. Like I said, which is, again is available really early in the game. It's like I said, so you hopefully won't have to do too many battles without uh, knowing where they are before you have it. 
This is also why it's super important to get AP because some of these abilities are literally uh, game changing and not having them would make this game much, much harder. So definitely uh, try to earn AP. Um, note, there's actually two different types of attacks. Uh, there is uh, physical damage and magical damage. Attacks. Like so every, every enemy, every hero, they all have two types of defenses. There's physical defense and magic defense, right? Um, every, like I said, so physical attacks take off physical defense magic attacks take off magical defense right and you can't do damage their hp with most weapons until the respective defense is depleted so if you want to uh, kill an uh, enemy with physical attacks you have to reduce their physical defense to zero and ditto with magic attacks there is however right some attacks that do damage to hp directly one of them is of course attacking with unarmed when you have no weapon equipped you can attack with unarmed this does one damage however this one damage ignores defenses and will just uh do one hp damage this can be relevant as many undead enemies such as skeletons only have exactly one hp so hitting them with an unarmed attack will kill them instantly Right, sometimes, like I said, after you win a fight, you'll get to the loot screen, and sometimes, if you've got enough experience, you'll have gain a level, which is a good chance to time to check your equipment because now you have more PP, and you might be able to equip some better gear. Right, for example, like if one Renzo gains a level two, he can probably you equip that ROM to make his Maliari spell more powerful. Right, and uh, down on the second level again, as we mentioned, you can get uh, Radovic uh, and add him to your team. Ray said he has an accessory equipped and not some armors and you know so if you want you can give him some better weapons if you have them right like I said and you're ready to go now you have four characters and you're pretty much if you want you are ready to go to the next floor down to the next floor if you want or since we're actually not that uh, far away you can actually run all the way back to uh town since you're still very close and if you don't want to use them you can actually trade him out uh, for a different character um and again just remember to take off his equipment uh, like you uh, did with the other characters before uh changing him right and then uh after you have selected the characters you want uh, again, you might have a bit more bunny, so you might want to check out the weapons and armor shop and maybe uh, consider, like I said, buying another, an upgrade or two if you have some extra money. Right, said. Yep, and remember to equip uh, your new the character you added to your team, like I said, because you definitely don't want to have them running down there without gear. And uh, yeah, and you can also uh, run to the item shop, the weapon shop, if you want to pick up some upgrades. Right, anyway, um, there's some of the enemies who have special properties in the dungeon, such as griffins who have flying or wizards who have reflect. Right, said flying enemies can only be hit by ranged attacks, such as uh, magic, bows, and guns. Whereas wizards, like the reflect spell, if you hit them with magic, they will actually um, reflect that damage back onto you. So you definitely want to use physical attacks on them, and you want to use ranged attacks on things like gargoyles. Right, um... And then once you, like I said, there's another combat uh, enemy. There's some enemies who also will use attacks that can destroy items. For example, the destroyers have an attack called Ravage that will uh, that has a chance of destroying an item. Such as in this example, Ravage destroyed a Saspari's helmet. Right. So if you, like I said, get an item destroyed, or if you suddenly notice that one of your characters are missing an item, it probably got destroyed by a monster attack. Something to keep in mind. So it is good to have a couple of extra pieces of equipment lying around um, after, like I said, just in case. Like I said, a lot of enemies drop equipment. Um, and then there's also like puzzle in dungeons. Some of them are math puzzles, which you tries to and you try to solve the math problems to figure out where you need to go on the map to find the treasure. Right, so once you think you're on the space, you can just double check the map, right? Make sure you're on the right space, right? And this is simple by going to the event tab and you just find that the particular riddle you're looking for, right? Double check the map. And if you're on the right coordinates, you should be able to find the treasure. Right, most of these treasures are um, weapons that do like status effects. And again, there's also other riddles that are like more of a map thing. These are kind of like your treasure classic X marks the spot uh, type of maps. Like I said, these ones, these are fun. Like I said, there's, you know, just kind of have to be, keep your eye out. Like just kind of like when you see that pattern of the, of the dungeon, you're like, okay, maybe this, this looks kind of like the map. Is this where the treasure is? And you 
uh, go to that spot. And again, you can find more uh, status effects weapons that, you know, again, do stuff like poison damage or whatever. Uh, like I said, super important. Uh, just kind of keep your eyes out. But uh, yeah, the only other thing I really want to mention is that uh, every 10 floors, there is a two-way teleporter that will take you back to the main town on floor zero. So don't get too worried like, you know, that you have to keep running all the way back to town every time you want to sell or whatever. Like, no, there are portals every 10 floors to make travel uh, between um, the city and uh, the lower levels of the dungeon easier. Right. So, but yeah, there's not too much more to say about this. This is a really fun and addictive game. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, these are some, uh, tips that could help you guys. And, uh, anyway, I just, uh, keep, uh, adventuring, have fun. And, uh, you know, Hey, let me know in the comments, you know, what you think, if you've tried this game yet, or if you're thinking about it, like what kind of character you want, what kind of strategies, you know, you, you want, like I said, I'd be kind of interested to see some other opinions on this since this is such a new game. Not a lot's been written on it yet. So anyway, Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching.